morning, LifeBridge. We are so glad that you have joined us today. At LifeBridge, church is more than just a service. There are ways for you to be involved and connected throughout the week because we value community. So if you have not yet joined us beyond the message, I want to encourage you to sign up for our email and connect at least one of the ways this week. You can find the link to sign up for the email that we send out twice a week below. One of the ways to connect with others and grow in your prayer life is at our Tuesday night prayer meeting. Join us as we pray with each other and for each other. Another way to connect is on our Wednesday night Why I Believe Life Bridge Testimonies. This week, we will hear the testimony of Ricardo, how God has made an impact on his life as he has worked all over the globe. All of our meetings happen on Zoom. So sign up for our email or send us a message and we will make sure that you get all the information you need to connect. Also, each week we have a different plan on the YouVersion Bible app. It's a great way to be in the Word daily and also connect with others. This week we will explore the Sermon on the Mount and how the truth that Jesus teaches us applies to all of our lives. Just this past week, my wife, Jendi, said to me, we need to go through the closet in the guest bedroom. The closet in our guest bedroom has all kinds of stuff. It has empty boxes and suitcases, equipment that we don't use anymore, things that we hope to use one day. There's simply junk in there that we need to get rid of. Do you have a place like that in your house? A place in your house where you keep junk like that? Maybe you have a junk drawer. All the things you're not quite sure where to put. Maybe you have a junk closet. Stuff you seldom use. Maybe it contains stuff that you should have thrown away a long time ago. Unfortunately, this is where cockroaches live. This is where they breed. And maybe that makes you a little squeamish right now. And just thinking about cockroaches in your house in a closet, in a drawer. It makes you wanna go and start cleaning right now. And if that's you, that's good. I want you to hold on to that feeling because that is a powerful thing that God can use in your life. But before you run off and start cleaning out that, that physical closet, I want you to think about the spiritual implications. Those drawers or those closets in our lives are where we stash away lies. The undesirable parts of who we are, the dark places of our life, the places where we have secrets. We're in a series called Killed the Cockroach. A cockroach is a personal agreement that you have made with a lie. We all have cockroaches in our lives. No one is exempt. A cockroach is something that you believe about yourself based off a lie you have convinced yourself of. I'm not lovable or no one cares about me. That's a, that's a lie or a cockroach that you may have in your life. You may believe you're not good enough or that you are actually better than others. Now, these are cockroaches. This is a, a lie. A cockroach is a lie that you and I have come to believe. And if all of us have cockroaches in our lives, our soul has these drawers and and closets. And that's where the cockroaches go to live. That's where they, deep in our soul, they are. And, And that's where the lies breed. They hide and lurk. They exist almost unknown in our lives. And that's what this whole series is about. 
how you and I, we can get rid of the bad habits and, and thoughts in our lives, how we can kill the lies so that we can truly live the way that God intended us to live. In our house here, we live on the ground floor. And every now and then, a, a literal cockroach will make its way into our house. Jendi gets great satisfaction out of hunting them down and killing them. Now, unfortunately, she always uses my shoes. For some reason, my shoes are this magical shoe that, uh, that are only allowed to be kill the cockroaches. She says my shoes are bigger and as a result that she doesn't have to get as close to the cockroach. Now, in comparison to you and I, cockroaches are not that big. Cockroaches, compared to you and I, are physically small. You know, a cockroach weighs about 0.1 gram, depending on if they're pregnant or not. <laughs> so if you weigh 150 pounds, and I weigh a lot more than that, you outweigh the cockroach over 600,000 times. And you are over 9 million times bigger. Over the last several weeks, several of you have told me you are scared of cockroaches. And I wonder why something so small can have such power in our lives. Why these lies in our lives can produce such undesirable behaviors in our lives. Why is it that these cockroaches or lies have such profound effects on our lies? And the goal of this series is that you and I would experiment, experience permanent freedom in our lives. Because the sad part is that too many people, too many church-going people are satisfied right now. They're, they're content. They've settled for recycled freedom in their lives. Recycled freedom is that level of freedom that you experienced in your life at one point uh, from sin. But it's that same kind of freedom that you had last week. And what happens is this week is much different than last week. Because this week you've slipped back into the bad decisions and the sinful choices and the negative thoughts. And with all of that comes the paralyzing regret. And so you've gone back to the same level of freedom that you had last week. And it's just this cycle that we continue to live week after week, day after day. And this is not what Jesus died on the cross for. Jesus died so that, that we could have everlasting, permanent, deep, transformative freedom in our lives. Not a recycled temporary freedom, but a true lasting freedom. Jesus died so that we could have freedom from the deepest, darkest areas of our lives. And so in Ephesians 4, when Paul is writing to the believers in Ephesus, and he's talking about freedom, and he's talking about the freedom that is true and lasting, a freedom that can exist in, in every closet and drawer in our lives, not just the places that everyone sees, not just in the kitchen and in the living room, but every single place. Jesus came and died to give us true freedom in the deepest, darkest places of life. And this is what Paul says to the believers in Ephesians 4. Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives them because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against him. And what Paul is doing here is he's showing us two kinds of people, believers and unbelievers. And he calls the unbelievers here Gentiles. And as unbelievers, they have hardened their hearts. They have closed their minds off from God. And someone who lives apart from God says, he, Paul says that they are living confused or they are living useless lives because their mind is full of darkness. And, and this is what cockroaches do in our lives. Cockroaches create separation. A cockroach or a lie that we believe separates us from God. And they separate us from the life that God has for us. And this is what sin does in our lives. It, it, it separates us from God. It creates distance between our Heavenly Father and us. And all of us know the feeling of being separated. 
Right now, I feel separated from all of you. I don't get to be with you. I don't get to see you smile. I don't get to hear your laugh when I tell a terrible joke. The pandemic has, has physically separated the world. And maybe right now you feel distant or separated from the rest of the world because our country is in lockdown. I know for Jendi and I, with the airport being closed, it's separated us from friends and family. But the great truth is that God does not want you and I to be separated from him. God made a way for us to know him and to live free from the lies that hold us apart from him. And that's why he sent Jesus to us. God does not want us to be ruled by that, that one gram cockroach. And God is so much bigger than the lie and, the lie and what comes with it. And that's what Paul goes on to say in verse 19. He says, they have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasures and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. This is one of those series where we are being challenged to take a deep look into our lives. Not just at the surface level, but to get in the cabinet underneath the sink. To go through that closet full of junk that you never go into. And so I ask you right now, where are you? What are you living for? Are you stuck in the lustful pleasures of the world? Are you giving in to the negative thoughts and bad habits of your life? We all have these cockroaches in our lives. But the question is, do you want to kill them? Are you, are you ready to kill the lies and truly live with the freedom that God wants us to live in? And if the answer is yes, that you're in a, in a good place right now. This is where Paul is going to lead us next. And how we can kill the cockroach. How to kill the cockroach. How do we do it? We, we have to corner it. And to corner it, we have, it starts with identifying it identifying the lies that separate you from God. And we talked about that last week. And that's why Paul reminds us of what we already know in verse 20. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, you may be listening right now to this and you have been a follower, a Christ follower. You read your Bible, you've taken steps of faith and you've grown, but you keep going back to that sin. You're stuck in this cycle. And right now, Paul is reminding you that this is not who you are. You're, you're better than giving into those desires. You're better than the lies you have come to believe. You were made to live, and the life comes from knowing truth. Truth transforms our lives. And the truth that Paul is referring to here is Jesus. And Jesus gives us freedom in our lives. We were not meant to live lives that are caught up in sin, making us useless. You and I were designed to live in the truth, making ourselves purposeful. It's raining right now, but I'm going to keep going. So then how do we live like that? Paul tells us this is what we do in verse 22. He says, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. You are called to get rid of the old you, to clean out that drawer, to clean out that closet. All the ways that you used to live and all the ways that you used to think because of those, those things, they just lead to corruption. They just lead you away from God. There are lies. Throw it off. Don't believe them. Instead, let the spirit of truth renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. To be made new in the attitudes of your mind, Paul says that next we have to, the next step is that we have to throw off our old self and then we have to let the spirit come in and renew us, to make us new, uh, new in attitude and thoughts. Listen, when we start moving things around in our drunk drawers and in our closets, this is when we reveal the cockroaches. This is when we begin to, to corner the lies and defeat the lies. Cockroaches are revealed in light. 
If we have the courage to, to shine the light of truth in those dark areas of our lives, this is going to disturb the cockroaches. And this is what happens when we shine light. This is when we shine truth on cockroaches, lies. They begin to run away. You know when you're in that closet looking for something or you're under the sink grabbing a new sponge and suddenly behind the bottle or in that hard to reach area, there it is, a cockroach. And it reveals itself in it and it runs away. And so Paul tells us, throw off the old self by shining light, shining truth on the lies. So when that little lie of you're not good enough or you're not important reveals itself in your life, you shine truth on it. Psalm 139, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Ephesians 2.10, you are God's masterpiece. And when that lie of, comes in that you need that thing or you need that person in your life to be satisfied, shine truth on that lie. John 6, 35 said, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Psalms 107, 9, for only God can truly satisfy the soul. He fills it with good things. We, we throw off the old self by shining the light, shining the truth on the lies. And when we do this, we are doing exactly what Paul said about becoming created the way God wants us to be, truly righteous and holy. We corner the cockroaches when we begin thinking not just new thoughts, but true thoughts. Again, truth is what transforms our lives. And the truth is Jesus gives you and I freedom in our lives from the sin. And when we apply that truth in our lives, when we apply God's truth in our lives, that's when we corner the lies. This next week, I want to invite you to join our Bible reading plan this week as we explore the apical truth that Jesus taught in one of the most famous sermons, the, the Sermon on the Mount. And how you and I, we can have truth in our attitude, in our actions, and in our words. Truth that will lead us to live the way God designed us to live. We have a choice in our lives. We can choose to believe the truth or the lies. And my guess is that you are, are tired of believing the lies. Throughout this series, I have learned a whole lot more than I've wanted to know about cockroaches. Did you know that a cockroach can go without water for two weeks? They can go without food for a whole month. They can even hold their breath for, for 40 minutes. In fact, a cockroach can live a whole week without its head. When we compare this to the reality of the lies in our lives, we believe we have controlled the cockroach. We believe we have controlled the lies in our lives. But, but every two weeks or, or maybe once a month, that lie reveals itself in our lives and we give in to its destruction and it wreaks havoc in our lives and it drives us into bad habits and negative thoughts and it creates separation between you and God. And then we get to that place and we say, how did I get here? How did this happen? I, like, I, I'm, I'm so deep in this. Again, I don't know how this happened. I thought this was all over. I, but all we did is we cornered it. We, we, we spotted it. We may have shined light on it, but all we did was corner it. We tried to drown it. We tried to starve it by, by not going back to it for a couple of weeks. But yet it comes back, and when it comes back, it just brings darkness into your life. Friends, I don't want you to miss next week because next week we talk about after we have cornered the cockroach, how do we ultimately kill the cockroach? But today we have to continue the hard work. We have to continue cleaning out the junk in our lives, shining light on the lives. Corner the cockroach and allow the spirit of truth to come in and transform your lives. 
cockroaches in our lives are going to die slowly. They're not going to die quickly. Transformation is not going to happen overnight. That lie that you believed will require you combating it with truth time and time again, day after day. You need consistent and extended effort. We have to stay focused on God's truth and daily apply it to our lives because truth transforms. Truth leads us to freedom. This is how we kill the lies. This is how we kill the cockroach. Father God, I thank you for what you're doing in people's lives right now, that as we begin to identify the lies and corner the lies, God, I pray that we would continue to have the courage to seek out those lies in our lives. God, give us, give us truth. Give us endurance to continue pressing on to, to, to capture these cockroaches and ultimately to kill these cockroaches. God, I thank you that, that you are, are with us right now. Give us, continue to give us truth and, and endurance through this time. And I pray all these things in your precious name. Amen. We are so glad that you joined us today. Our church lobby time is starting right now, and we would love to see you connect. Follow the link below. Also below, you will find the recommended worship songs that go with today's message. Remember, you can continue to give online through our website, lifebridgeic.com slash give. Thank you for your generosity. At LifeBridge, our mission is to make heaven more crowded, and we do that by bridging lives to Christ. And we would be honored if you would join us in that mission by liking this video and sharing it with friends and family. See you soon.